The East End of London, October 1936. I took them. They didn't mind? No, they didn't mind. Is Heidi coming? I don't know. Nothing he knows. He didn't ask him. He didn't say. He knows about the demonstration, doesn't he? I don't know whether he knows or he doesn't know. I didn't discuss it with him. I took the kids, that's all. Hey, Sarah, you should read up to Sinclair's book about the meat canning industry. It's an eye-opener. Books. Nothing else interests him, only books. Did you see anything outside? Mm. What's happening? The streets are packed with people. Never seen so many people. They've got barricades, a gardener's corner. Oh, there'll be such trouble. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be trouble. You ever known a demonstration where there wasn't trouble? And the police? There'll be more police and black shirts. What time are they marching? I don't know. Harry, you know where your cigarettes are, don't you? I know where they are. And you know what's on at the cinema? So? And you know also what time it opens? So, why don't you know what time they plan to march? Oh, leave me alone, Sarah, will you? Two o'clock they plan to march now. Nah. So you do know. Why didn't you tell me straight away? Shouldn't you tell me something when I ask you? I didn't know what time they march, so what do you want of me? But you did know when I nagged you. So I suddenly remembered. Is anything terrible in that? Uh. <coughs> air. I must have air. Basement will kill me. God knows what I'll do without there when I'm dead. Who else was at Lottie's? All of them. Who's all of them? All of them, you know, Lottie and Hyman, the boys. Solly and Martin. Here, lay these out. The boys will be coming soon. Good woman, I could just do with a cup of tea. What's the matter? You didn't have any tea by Lottie's? No. Liar. I didn't have any tea by Lottie's, I tell you. Good God, woman, why don't you believe me when I tell you things? You tell me why. Why don't I believe him when he tells me things? As if he's such an old woman, never told lies before. What's the matter? You never told lies before, I don't think. All right, so I had tea at Lottie's. There, you're satisfied now. Well, of course you had tea at Lottie's. Don't I know you had tea at Lottie's? You think I'm going to think the Lottie wouldn't make you a cup of tea? No, I'll leave off, Sarah. No, this time I won't leave off. I want to know why you told me you didn't have tea at Lottie's when you know perfectly well you did. I want to know. I know you had tea there, and you know you had tea there. So what harm is it if you tell me? You think I can oh, you a cup of yeah, tea there yeah. or not? You can drink tea there till it comes out of your eyes and I wouldn't care, as long as you tell me. Sarah, will you please stop nagging me, will you? What difference if I had tea there if I didn't have tea there? That's just what I'm saying. All I want to know is whether you're all, all of a liar. liar. Half of a liar. liar. Is she cold? Sarah! Is she cold? Oh, good, you're here. I haven't sent you over some verse Oh. It's all right, they're here. Come on down. Boy, how are you going? You're fighting fit for the demo. I'm fit. Like a Trojan, I'm fit. You won't see him at any demo. It's the pictures you're fighting. Yeah, the pictures. Don't be bloody mad. You seen the streets today? Mm hmm. Sarah, you seen the streets yet? Mobbed. Mobbed. The lads have been there since seven this morning. But, Dave, there's so much work here to do. Hello, Sarah. I know all about the work here, but there are plenty of party members to do it. Hello, Sarah. Spain is the battlefront. Spain is the real issue at last. Spain? Spain, Dave. Spain? Dave is joining the International Brigade. He's leaving for Spain tomorrow morning. But Spain is only one issue brought to a head. You're too young. Dave, don't go mad all of a sudden. It's not all glory, you know. Harry, you look as though you didn't sleep last night. Hey? You the old Cossack. Oh, <laughs> you know what Cossacks are. <laughs> I saw your sister at all going, Harry. She was waving your mother's walking stick in the air. Oh, she's mad. Where's this cup of tea, Sarah? Do your fly buttons up, Monty, you tramp, you. <laughs> now then, Dave, tell me what's happened and what the plans are. It's like this. The party loudspeaker vans have been out all morning. You heard them. Mm -hmm. The fascists are gathering at Royal Mint Street near the bridge. Now, they plan a march up to Allgate, down Commercial Road to Salmon Lane in Limehouse. You know, Salmon Lane, mm -hmm. where they think they're going to hold a meeting. 
Then they plan and go on to Victoria Park and hold another meeting. Two meetings? What do they want to hold two meetings for? Uh, why shouldn't they hold two meetings? Well, you think they should hold two meetings? Well, it's not what I think. She's such a funny woman. It's not what I think. But they want to hold two meetings? So what's so strange about that? Oh, Cost so much money. Perhaps you want we should have a collection for them? <laughs> now... They could go along the highway by the docks and then up Cable Street, but Mosley won't take the highway because that's the back way. Mm. Though the police will suggest he does. Oh, I bet the police cause trouble. Well, they've had to call in forces from outside London. You won't make it a real fight, boys, will you? I mean, you won't get hurt. Sarah, you remember they threw a seven-year-old girl through a glass window. So don't fight the bastards. Now, Monty, there's to be discipline, remember. There's to be no attack or bottle throwing. It's a test. You know that, don't you? It's a test for us. We're to stop and pass in, that's all. Sure. We'll stop and pass it. If I see a black shirt come by, I'll tap his shoulder and I'll say, excuse me, but you can't come this way today. We're digging up the road. Mm -hmm. And he'll look at my hammer and sickle and he'll doff his cap and he'll say, oh, I beg your pardon, comrade. <laughs> I'll take the underground. <laughs> comrades. <laughs> you want to know what the plans are or you don't want to know? Again, as we don't know what's going to happen, we've done this. Some of the workers are rallying at Royal Mint Street, so if the fascists want to go through the highway, they'll have to fight for it. But we guess they want to stick to the main route so as not to lose face. You follow? Mm -hmm. We've therefore called the main rally at Gardner's Corner. If, on the other hand, pass off Cable Street. Oh, everything happens in Cable Street. What else happened in Cable Street? Peter the painter had a fight with Churchill there, oh, didn't he? You're thinking of Sydney Street, sweetheart. Your nose gets everything mixed up. Oh, you're very wonderful, I suppose. Yes, you're the clever one. I don't get my facts mixed up anyway. But, but, but listen to him, my politician. Uh, Sarah, do me a favour. Leave the fist till later. If, on the other hand, they do try to come up Cable Street, then they'll meet some dockers and more barricades. And if any get through that lot, then they still can't hold their meetings, either in Salmon Lane or Victoria Park Square. Why not? Because since seven this morning, there's been some of our comrades standing there with our platforms. Bloody oh. wonderful, isn't it? Makes you feel proud, eh, Sarah? Every section of this working-class area that we've approached has responded. The dockers at Limehouse have come out to the man, the lot. The unions, the co-ops, Labour Party members and the Jewish People's Council. The Board of Deputies? There she goes again. <laughs> not the Jewish Board of Deputies. They ask the Jewish population to keep away. No, the Jewish People's Council. The ones that organised that mass demo against Hitler some mm. years back. There's been nothing like it since the General Strike. Oh, Christ. The General Strike. That was a time, Sarah, eh? What are you asking me for? You want I should remember you were missing for six days when Ada was ill? Yes, I was missing, I'm sure. I'm sure you were missing. Where was I missing? Well, how should I know where you were missing? If I'd have known where you were missing, you wouldn't have been missing. <laughs> what about us, Dave? Oh, you haven't suggested to hurry me where to go yet. There's plenty of time. They won't try to march till two and it's only 12.30. <laughs> You eaten? You boys had lunch? We all had lunch at my place, Sarah. Sit down. Stop <laughs> moving a few seconds. Take your pick, Sarah. If you fancy yourself as a nurse, then go to Allgate. We've got a first aid post there near Whitechapel Library. Such organisation. And you lot? Monty is taking some of the lads to the left flank of Cable Street. Right. Prince right. is organising a team of cyclist messengers mm -hmm. between the main posts and headquarters. <laughs> I'm going round the street at the last minute to call everyone out and then... Um, that's the lot. <laughs> All we have to do is wait. <sighs> Where is Ada? Ada and Ronnie are at Jaime's place. I thought it best they get right out of the way. You think she'll stay away? Your daughter is a born fighter, Sarah. Mm. Of course she is. She'll be round the streets organising a pioneers, you see. Never. I told her to stay there and she'll stay there. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> God forbid she should be like you and run wild. All right, so she should be like you then? Well, I'm jolly sure she should oh. be like me. Ronnie isn't enough for him yet. A boy of five running about at night and swearing at his aunts. <laughs> oh, bless him. He didn't half upset them. They wouldn't let him mess around with the radio, so he started effing and blinding <laughs> and threw their books on the floor. Like you, he throws things. Have you ever come across a woman like her before? I'd have another cup of tea. I'll make it. I'll make it. Oh, he's so sweet when anybody else is around. I'll make some sandwiches. But we've eaten, Sarah. Oh, it's always eat. You don't know what time you'll be back. The boys! Listen! Hear them! Sarah! That's the same cry the people of Madrid were shouting. And they didn't get past either. Imagine it. All those women and children coming out into the streets and making barricades with their beds and their chairs. It was a slaughter. And then came the 1st International Brigade. The Edgar André from Germany. Commune de Paris from France. 
And the Dombrowski from Poland. Wait till our Dave gets over there. You'll give them brass balls for breakfast, Dave, eh? You're really going, Dave? Does Ada know? Don't tell her, Sarah. You know how dramatic calf love is? Calf love. If you get back alive from Spain, she'll marry you at the landing stage. Mark me. How are you going? They tell me it's a weekend trip to Paris and then a midnight ramble over the Pyrenees, the back way. Hmm. It's terrible out there, they say. They say we've lost a lot of good comrades already. We've lost too many good comrades out there. Do you hear me, Dave? Sammy Evner and Laura McBurch at Bodilla. Felicia Brown and Ernst Julius at Aragon. Julius? The tailor who used to work with us at Cactus. He was only a young boy. And Felicia, an artist. And Lorimer, an Oxford undergraduate. And Cornford was killed at Cordova. And Ronnie Symes at Madrid. And Stevie Yates, Casa del Campo. Casa del Campo. Madrid. Such beautiful names and all that killing. Aye. You know who organised the first British group? Nat Cohen. <laughs> yeah, I used to go to school with him. Him and Sam Masters were on a cycling holiday in France. As soon as they heard of the revolt, they cycled over to Barcelona and started the Tom Man Centurion. He's a real madman, Nat Cohen. He chalked slogans right outside the police station. I, I used to work with him. God knows if they'll come back alive. When three fascist deserters were asked how they reached our lines, they said they came through the hills of the widows, orphans and sweethearts. They lost so many men attacking those hills. And may they lose many more. The war in Spain is not a game of cards, Monty. You don't pay in pennies when you lose. May they lose many more. What kind of talk is that? Sometimes, Monty, I think you only enjoy the battle and that one day you'll forget the ideal. You hate too much. You can't have brotherhood when you hate. There's only one difference between them and us. We know what we're fighting for. It's almost an unfair battle. Unfair, he says. When Germany and Italy are supplying them with guns and tanks and aeroplanes, and all our boys have got are rifles and mortars. You call that unfair, I don't think. When you fight men who are blind, it's always unfair. You think I'm going to enjoy shooting a man because he calls himself a fascist? I feel so sick at the thought of firing a rifle that I think I'll board that boat with a blindfold over my eyes. Sometimes I think that's the only way to do things. I'm not even sure that I want to go, only I know if I don't, then, then, well... What sense can a man make of his life? You're really a pacifist, aren't you, Dave? I'm a terribly sad pacifist, Sarah. I understand you, Dave. I know what you mean, boy. What do you want we should say? You go, we're proud of you. You stay behind... We love you. Sometimes you live in a way you don't know why. You just do a thing. So you don't have to shout. You're shouting at yourself. But a pacifist, Dave. There's going to be a big war soon. A fascist war. Yeah. You think it's time for pacifism? He's right, Dave. I know it's not time yet. I know that. I know there is still some fighting to be done. But it will come. It will come, you know, when there'll be a sort of long pause and everyone will just be frightened of each other and still think they have to fight. That'll be the time. But now, well, I feel like an old gardener who knows he won't live through to the spring to plant his seeds. To start the full time. Oh, I might be a full to lot. We can't take the risk. Let's get going. I'll clean it and bring it back later. But I've made your tea. Stick it back in the pot. We'll drink it later. Now, you two, you know where the posts are Cable Street, Royal Mint Street, and Gardener's Corner. The street is not. Jesus, look at them. Everybody's coming out. Everybody. Oh, where's the first aid post? Whitechapel Library. Harry, are you coming? Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. You, you, you go on. Good God, there's Al Bosque and his wife. She's got the baby with her. Hey, Sarah, there's Al Bosque and his wife. Yeah, I heard, I heard. Are you coming now, Harry? I'm going to Gardner's Corner. Come on, we'll be late. It's only dead body with that rolling pin, Sarah. It hurts. Ah, <laughs> Here, huh? wait this. Do something useful. Hey, Sarah, wait for me. Hey, Sarah. Away from me!
I'll get some water on the stove. Sit him in a chair. All right. Sit down. <sighs> Sissy! Don't come down yet. Don't get some first aid kit from somewhere. Now, don't talk too much and don't move, Jaime. Jesus, what a state you're in. Sarah will go mad. Clean me up quickly, then. Sissy! Sissy! Try that sweet shot in the entire big hole. I saw a first aid group there. They might still be there. Aspros! Get Try and get hold of some Aspros! Monty? He's hiding down there. Oh, my goodness, she's here. If there's one thing Sarah loves, it's someone who's ill to fuss over. Why didn't I go home? Because you know Lottie would say it serves you right. Mm. No, don't panic, Sarah. He's all right. He is all right. <gasps> Hi, me! Sarah Nightingale. Don't frighten him, I tell you. Fool you. They told me you were hurt. I nearly died. So did I. Fool. You had to go straight into it. I was only hit by a truncheon. Now do me a favour, Sarah, and make some tea. There's a good girl. Nobody else got hurt. Only him, the brave one. Oh, plenty got hurt. Oh, he's all right. You're all right, aren't you, Jaime? I'm here, aren't I? Well, why hasn't anybody done something? A sissy's gone to get some first aid. Sissy, Harry's sister. Yeah. Where is Harry, by the way? Has anybody seen him? Wait till I see him. I'll give him. You expected him to stay there? I saw him at Cable Street. He was waving the old red flag, but he didn't stay long. Took one look at the artillery and guns, said he was going to find us some sandwiches. They had guns at Cable Street. Did they use them? Nah. Only brought out to frighten us. Frighten us. Mark. They could have dropped a bomb today. We wouldn't have been frightened. Christ. What a day! <laughs> I mean, do you ever see anything like it? We threw stones and bottles at them, Sarah. They were on horseback with batons and they kept charging us. Yeah. So we threw stones. And you should have seen Monty when one policeman surrendered. <laughs> surrendered? A policeman? It's never happened before. He didn't know what to do, Monty didn't. Well, none of us knew. I mean, who's ever heard of a policeman surrendering? After the first came others. Half a dozen of them. My goodness, we made such a fuss of them. Gave them cigarettes and mugs of tea and called them comrade policemen. There's no turning back now. Nothing can stop the workers now. I'm not so sure. No, we won today, but the same taste doesn't stay long. Mosley... Mosley was turned back at Aldgate Pump. Everyone shouted hurrah. But I wonder how many of the people at Gardener's Corner were just sightseers. Nah. You know, in every political movement, there's just sightseers. Ten thousand bloody sightseers? Do me a favour, it wasn't a bank holiday. Any big excitement can be a bank holiday for a worker, believe me. Women, neat, bandage and plaster. Right, let's have a look at him. I'm coming, it's all right, I can manage. Where are you, sis? Oh, Gardener's Corner holding a banner. The union banner, you? Digging up paving stones in Cable Street. Paving stones? Yeah, we pulled out the railings from a nearby church and the stones from a gutter. I'll get some more coal on the fire. We turned over a lorry. A lorry? But it was the wrong one. The lorry we laid on was in a nearby yard. And when the call went up to bring the lorry, the boys, if you don't mind, grabbed one at the top of the street. I ask you. Keep still. There. You look more respectable now. <laughs> Anyone get hurt your way, sissy? Oh, some of the boys from my union got arrested. I'll huh? go make some tea now. Yeah, huh? Mick and Sammy, Dave Goldman. Oh. oh, and that bloody fool, if you'll excuse the expression, Sonny Beck. Sonny. Everybody is standing behind the barricades waiting for the black shirts to appear. The place is swarming with policemen waiting, just waiting for an opportunity to lay their hands on some of us. So look what he does. Not content with just standing there, Sonny knew perfectly well the orders were for the strictest discipline. Mm. Yeah, not content with just standing, he chose that moment to get up on Mrs O'Leary's vegetable barrow and make a political speech. <laughs> Let us now remember the lessons of the Russian yeah. Revolution. He starts like he was quoting Genesis, the nitwits. Mm. <laughs> then he finds that the barrow isn't safe, so he steps over to an iron bedstead and puts his foot through the springs just as he was quoting Lenin's letter to the toiling masses. <laughs> no, you can never stop Sonny making a speech. Yeah. But not in bed. <laughs> anyway, you know Sonny, a mouth like a cesspool and no shame. Mm. So he lets out a torrent of abuse at the capitalist bed makers <laughs> and the police just make a dive at him. Mick and Sammy tried to argue with the police, so they were hauled off. Oh, yeah, then Dave Goldman tried to explain. That was when he was hauled yeah. off, poor bastard, if you'll excuse the expression. 
So what'll happen? Well, the union will have to find the lawyers and probably pay the fine. What else? Oh. Yeah. Sissy, have you seen Harry? Harry, no. He's not a chore place, I suppose. Well, how should I know? I haven't been there all day. He's always a chore place. Sarah, I am not responsible for my brother's actions. None of us have ever been able to control him, the eldest brother. Mm. We warned you what you were taking on. You wanted to change him, she wanted to change him. It's your mother who spoils him, you know that. Spoils him? Do me a favour. The woman's been bedridden for the last ten years. Spoils him? He knows he can go to her. She'll feed him. He's her son, for God's sake. Oh, don't I know it. He's her son, all right. And he wants to be looked after, like everyone looks looks after her, only it's such a pity. He can walk. Yeah, yeah, so I know this already. Good night, everyone. Bye, see you. Yeah, I'll be seeing you, sissy. I hate her. Don't be a silly girl. Sissy's a good trade union organiser. She's a cow. Not a bit of warmth. Not a bit. What's the good of being a socialist if you're not warm? But Sissy has never liked Harry. Not a bit of warmth. Everything cold and calculated. People like that can't teach love and brotherhood. A love comes later, Sarah? Love comes now. You have to start with love. How can you talk about socialism otherwise? Yeah, yeah, comrade Khan. Come on now, what is this? We've just won. One of the biggest fights in working class history and all we do is quarrel. England, arise, the long, long night is over. Faint in the east, behold the dawn appears. Out of your evil sleep of toil and sorrow, England, arise, the long, long day is here. England, Hi, me. The children! God in heaven, I've forgotten the children! What's the matter with you? They're at my place! But I can't just leave them there. How could I forget them like that? What am I thinking of? I won't be long. But Ronnie will be asleep. And don't tell Lottie I got hit. <laughs> tell her I'm coming home soon. Oh, impetuous woman. Make yourself some food. Or oh, Annie's tea in the pot. Make yourself some food. With her, it's food all the time. Food and tea. No sooner you finish one cup than you got another. She's a sweetheart. And God forbid you should ever say you're not hungry. She starts singing that song. Uh, as man is only human, he must eat before he can think. As man is only <laughs> human, he, he must, must eat think. before he can think. Fine words are only empty air, but not his meat or his drink. Then left, right, left, then left, right, left, there's a place, comrade, for you. March with us in the ranks of the working class, for you are a worker too. We want more! Sandwiches. Your wife's looking for you. What? She's gone out for me? Yeah, just this minute. Did she have an old pin in her hand? No, no, she's gone to my place to collect the children. Blind me, hide me. What happened to you? You all right? Now, don't you fuss, Addy. Come on, here, drink your tea. That's it, Harry. Swill up, mate. Sure, sure. The children, you say. But... I saw Ada in the street. Uh, she was helping me, Harry, but don't tell Sarah. She was taking messages from Cable Street to headquarters. Mm. Ah. I knew she wouldn't stay in on such a day. Ah. March with us on the victory march, then went to look for Dave. <laughs> She'll break her little heart when she hears he's going to spunk. Mm. Mother? Ada. Mother? Hello, everyone. Hey, Ada. Dad, where's Mother? Hello, Ada. <laughs> you haven't seen her yet? <laughs> You'll cop it. She's gone to look for Ronnie. Be back in a quarter of an hour. Excuse me. Where are you going now? Must check up on the last few posts. See that all the other pioneers are safe. Christ, what a day, comrades! Hey, <laughs> comrades! And we didn't force her to be in the pioneers. Wasn't necessary. I tell you, show young people what socialism means. And they recognise life, a future. But it won't be pure in our lifetime. You know that, don't you, boys? Not even in hers, maybe, but in her children's lifetime. Then they'll begin to feel it. All the benefits, despite our mistakes. You'll see, despite our mistakes. 
Now, boys, tell me everything that happened. Mm. Don't you know? Sir Philip Game, the police commissioner, got the wind up and banned the march. Uh, he told Mosley to fight it out with a home secretary. But he wasn't going to have any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened to you? I was nearly arrested. <laughs> you? I was running through the streets, waving a red banner Sarah gave me, and a policeman told me to drop it. So? I dropped it. <laughs> and when I turned into Flower and Dean Street, I raised it again! Oh, hey! But he must have guessed what I was going to do. Christ, I never saw so many policemen appear so quickly. They seemed to pour out of all the windows when they heard that penny farthing whistle. I only just had time to hop into my mother's place. And you stayed there? I had a cup of tea. And then about four o'clock, I came out. I got to Gardener's Corner and police were charging the barricades. Yes. I didn't see no fascists. Then you get there? They stayed in the back streets. The police did all the attacking. So? So, I saw all the police were picking our boys off like flies. And then I saw my policeman. Oh. His hat was missing by this time. Oh. Oh, a vicious look came to his eyes when he saw me. <laughs> I didn't stop asking where he lost it. I just ran back to my mother's and read a book. So you were at your mother's. Yeah, I think we better get going before Santa comes back. Addy, yeah. we're going. Well, you're not staying for something to eat. Uh, Lottie's waiting for me, Addy. Come on, you two. Good luck, Harry. Good luck. Hey, Jaime, you won't tell us at my mother's all the time, will you? No? You think I'm a fool, don't you? Think I can't see? That I don't know what's going on? Look at him. The man of the house. Nothing matters to him. Well, Harry, why don't you look at me? Why don't you talk to me? I'm your wife, aren't I? A man is supposed to discuss things with his wife. What do you want me to say? Must I tell you what to say? Don't you know? Don't you just know? Artful. <laughs> oh, you're so artful. Yes, yes, I'm artful. Well, aren't you artful then? You think, because you sit there pretending to read, that I won't say anything. That's what you'd like. That I should just come in and carry on and not say anything. You'd like that, wouldn't you? That you should carry on your life just the same as always and no one should say anything. Oh, leave me alone, Sarah. Oh, leave me alone, Sarah. I'll leave you alone, all right. There'll be blue murder, Harry, you hear me? There'll be blue murder if it carries on like this. All our lives are going to be like this. That I can't leave a handbag in the room. You remember what happened last time? You left me. Remember? Remember? And you wanted to come back. And you came back, full of promises. What's happened to them now? Nothing's happened. Now stop lagging. Good God, you don't let a man live in peace. You can still pretend. After you took ten shillings from my bag, and you know that I know you took it, and you can still be righteous. Say you don't know anything about it. Go on. Say you don't know what I'm talking about. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Fire on your head! May you live so far if you don't know what I'm talking about. The money fell out of my purse, I suppose. I dropped it on the street. Fire on your head! I'll throw this book at you, so help me! I will throw this book at you! Stop it! Oh, stop it! Oh, tell your mother to stop it! She's the cause! It's her row! Don't you know your mother? 
the bar now. Oh, I'm the cause. You, me, you hit him, Angel, you hit him. I'm the cause. Why you? He's mad, Jumbo. Stop like he's mad. That's it. Run away. Go to your mother. She'll give you peace. She'll do everything for you. Weakling. You weakling. I'm so sorry, Mummy. Everybody's looking down at this. Oh, there, there, Bubba. There, there, my kinder. Shh, shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Shh. It's finished. I'm sorry. It's over. She's mad. Gone mad. Yes. Shh, shh, shh. Hey, don't, don't listen. It'll pass. Shh. April 1946. What? Are you ready? Oh. oh. You haven't been working. The place closed down. The place closed down. But you only started there on Monday. Well, so the place closed down. Is it my fault? It always happens where he works. Oh. You can't bring luck anywhere, can you? When it's a slump, you always manage to be the first one sacked. And when the season starts again, you're the last one to find work. Oh, Harry, you couldn't even make money during the war. The war, when everybody made money. What's this? £7.13? Why only £7.13? Four days' work. You haven't worked all day today. So what you been doing? I felt tired. Sleep. That's all you can do. You didn't peel potatoes or anything? <sighs> what am I standing here talking to you for? Don't I know you by now? I've got a headache. Yes, yes, headache. Ronnie not home yet? He's distributing leaflets. What leaflets? I don't know what leaflets. What leaflets? Leaflets. Come and make some tea. Ada will be here soon. Leave me alone, Sarah. Make some tea when I ask you. Oh. Hello, Ada. Ada? Ada, you're here? Go inside. Daddy will make some tea. Supper will be soon ready. <sighs> I got a nice supper. What nice supper? Barley soup. Oh. I left it on a small light all day while I was at work. Do you know if Ronnie's gone to my place to see if there's mail from Dave? I suppose so. He usually does when he knows you're coming here straight from work. Ronnie? I'm here. Ah, he's here. 250 leaflets in an hour and a half. Very good. What for? The May Day demo. Are you coming? I doubt it. I doubt it. Don't you find the march exciting any longer? I do not find the march exciting any longer. <laughs> Can't understand it. You and Dave were such pioneers in the early days. I got all my ideas from you two, and now... And now the letters, please. Letters? Letters? What letters? Oh, come on, Ronnie. Dave's letters. But I've been distributing leaflets. You mean you didn't go to my home to find... Oh, miles away, other direction. Thank you. <laughs> I-L-T. Now, what could that mean? I love thee? Give me those letters, please. <laughs> oh, I love thee, sister. You've been reading them. <laughs> Letter number 218. Christ, he's prolific. Oh, and here's 215. Lousy service, isn't it? And number 219. This one says I-L-T-T. -T. I love thee terribly, I suppose. And if I loved you... <laughs> I'd also love you terribly. Idiot. <laughs> Isn't it time that husband of yours was demobbed? The war's been over a year already. Imagine, I was only nine when he left. I've still kept all his letters, Ada, all of them. We've been living here for five years. He hasn't even seen this place, God help him. Harry? Harry? Where's Harry? 
Ah, good old Pops. Dad, I saw Monty Blatt. He says you must attend the meeting tonight. Ach, do me a favour. Listen to him. Party member won't attend branch meetings. How can you know what's going on in the world? That's where Ada gets her apathy from. She's you, and you are a lazy old sod. <laughs> oh! Are you going to the meeting? God, let me down, you fool! Let me down! <laughs> the meeting? <laughs> Stop it, you idiot! I've got a headache! Don't I'll quiet, fight you! you I'll fight you! Come on! <laughs> Fists up, show your metal. I just feel in the mood. Let me fall, leave off! <laughs> Windy? Ooh, I'll knock your block off, come here. I'll knock your block off. The table, the table, lay the table somewhere. Oh, the table, the table, oh, the table. Lovely soup, Mummy. Magnificent. You like it? I just said they did. I wasn't talking to you. She wasn't talking to you. Your mother never talks to me. You're so ugly, that's why. <laughs> I wouldn't talk to you either, only you wouldn't give me any spending money. He won't give you any spending money this week anyway. Don't tell me, he's out of work. The shop closed down. <laughs> Daddy, why does it always happen to you? It doesn't always happen to me. Always? All my life, that's all I can remember. Just one succession of jobs which have fallen through. Is it my fault that the garment industry is so unstable? It's not the industry, it's you. Yes, me. Well, isn't it you? Oh, Ada, leave off. I have enough with your mother. I've got a headache. Don't wonder you have a headache. You spend most of your time sleeping. Oh, yes, yeah, sleeping. What are you going to do now? I look for another job on Monday. What's wrong with Sunday? On the Whitechapel Road, there's always governors looking for machinists. Those people are there to work. They're there to gossip. Gossip, that's all. Monday, I find a job. Start straight away. It's busy now, you know. Morgen, morgen, no nicht heute. Sogge no la foile, Leute. Yes. Daddy, you are the world's biggest procrastinator. Give the boy a break, Addy. That's a big word. He ought to be ashamed of himself. The industry's booming with work and he's out of a job. You probably got the sack, didn't you? I did not get the sack. Oh, what a life Mummy's had to put up with this. I shall be glad to get away. Get away where? Anywhere. When Dave comes back, we shall leave London and live in the country. That'll be our socialism. <coughs> Remember this, Ronnie. The family should be a unit, and your work and your life should be part of one existence, not something hacked about by a bus queue and office hours. A man should see, know and love his job. Don't you want to feel your life? Savour it gently. In the country, we shall be somewhere where the air doesn't smell of bricks. And the kids can grow up without seeing grandparents who are continually shouting at each other. Ada, Ada! And no more political activity? No more political activity. I bet Dave won't agree to that. Dave fought in Spain. He won't desert humanity like that. Humanity? Oh, listen to her. With a Labour majority in the House. And two of our own party members. It's only just the beginning. It's, only, it's always only just the beginning for the party. Every defeat is a victory and every victory is the beginning. But it is. It is the beginning. <laughs> Plans for town and country planning. Yes. New cities and schools and hospitals. Nationalisation. Yes. National health. <laughs> Think of it. The whole country will be organised to cooperate instead of tear running right to the throats. That's what I said to them in a public speech at school, and all the boys cheered and whistled and stamped their feet <laughs> and blew raspberries. <laughs> I do not believe in the right to organise people. And anyway, I'm not so sure that I love them enough to want to organise them. This from you, Ada? And you used to be such an organiser. I'm tired, Mother. I spent 18 months waiting for Dave to return from Spain, and now I've waited six years for him to come home from a war against fascism, and I'm tired. Six years. In and out of offices, auditing books, and working with young girls who are morons. Lipsticked, giggling morons. And Dave's experience is the same. Fighting with men who he says did not know what the war was about. Away from their wives, they behaved like animals. In fact, they wanted to get away from their wives in order to behave like animals. Give them another war and they'd run back again. Oh, yes. The service killed any illusions Dave may have once had about the splendid and heroic working class. This is the talk of an intellectual, mm. Ada. Mm. God in heaven, save me from the claptrap of the threepenny pamphlet. How many friends has the party lost because of the lousy, meaningless titles they give to people. He was a bourgeois intellectual 
He was a Trotskyist. He was a reactionary social democrat. Shh, gone. But wasn't it true? Didn't these people help to bolster a rotten society? The only rotten society is an industrial society. It makes a man stand on his head and then convinces him he's good-looking. I'll tell you something. It wasn't the Trotskyist or the social democrat did the damage. It was progress. <laughs> there. Progress. And nobody dared fight progress. But that's no reason to run away. Life still carries on. A man still gets married, doesn't he? He still has children. He laughs. Mm -hmm. He finds things to make him laugh. A man can always laugh, <laughs> can't he? As if that meant he lived. <sighs> Even a flower can grow in the jungle, can't it? Because there is always some earth and water and sun. But there is still the jungle, struggling for its own existence. And the sick screeching of animals terrified of each other. As if laughter were proof. And we and the party don't want to do away with the jungle, I suppose. No, you do not want to do away with the jungle, I suppose. Oh. You have never cried against the jungle of an industrial society. You've never wanted to destroy its values, simply to own them yourselves. It only seemed a crime to you that a man spent all his working hours in front of a machine because he did not own that machine. Heavens, the glory of owning a machine. So what? We shouldn't care anymore. We must all run away. C care? What right have we to care? How can we care for a world outside ourselves when the world inside is in disorder? Care? Haven't you ever stopped, Mother? I mean stopped. And seen yourself standing with your arms open and suddenly paused. Come to my bosom, everybody. Come to my bosom. How can you possibly imagine your arms are long enough, for God's sake? What audacity tells you you can harbour a billion people in a theory? What great, big, stupendous, egotistical audacity? Tell me! Oh. Oh. But it is an industrial age, you silly girl. Let's face facts. Don't, Don't let, let us, us kid ourselves. ourselves. It is the challenge of our time. Balls. You can't run away from it. Stop me. Then you're a coward. That's all I can say. You're a coward. She had a fine example from her father, didn't she? What do you mean, she had a fine example from her father? You don't understand what I'm saying, I suppose. Oh, you make me sick. Ah, you make me sick. I make him sick. Him, my fine man. You're the reason that she thinks like this. You know that. Oh, yes, me. Well, of course, you. Who else? I'll wash up. I didn't bring her up. She's all your work. Well, that's just it. You didn't bring her up. You weren't concerned, were you? You left it all to me while you went to your mother's or to the pictures or out with your friends. Yes, I went out with my friend, sure. Well, didn't you? May I have so many pennies for the times you went up west to pictures? Oh, leave off, Sarah. Leave off. That's all you can say. Leave off. Leave me alone. That was it. I did leave you alone. That's why I had all the trouble. I'm going home, Mummy. Oh, no, Ada, stay. It's early yet. Stay. We'll play solo. I'm feeling tired, and I must write to Dave. Well, stay here and write to Dave. Sh look, we'll all be quiet. Ronnie's going out. Daddy will go to bed, and i got some washing to do. Stay, Ada, stay. What do you want to rush home for, hmm? A cold, miserable two-room flat all on your own. Stay. We're a family, aren't we? I've also got washing to do. Well, I'll do it for you. What's a mother for? Straight from work, I'll go to your place and I'll bring it back with me. Stay. You've got company here. Perhaps Uncle Jaime and Auntie Lottie will come up. What do you want to be on your own for, tell me? I'm not afraid of being on my own. I must go. Go, then. Will we see you tomorrow? Yes. I'll come for supper tomorrow night. Well, good night. Good night. Good night, Ronnie. Good night, Addy. You washing up, Ronnie? I'm washing up. You, I don't have to worry about. <laughs> but your sister runs away. The first sight of a little bother, she runs away. Why does she run away, Ronnie? Before she used to sit and discuss things. Now she runs to her home. Such a home to run to, two rooms in the shadow. But, Ma, she's a married woman herself. You think she hasn't her own worries, wondering what it'll be like to see Dave after all these years? But you never run away from a discussion. <laughs> Least I've got you around to help me solve problems. Mother, my one virtue, if i got any at all, is that I always imagine you can solve things by talking about them. Ask my Ford master. You see what you do? That's your daughter. 
Not a word from her father to ask her to stay. I didn't drive her away. Oh, no, you didn't drive her away. How could you? You were the good, considerate father. Look at you. Did you shave this morning? Look at the cigarette ash on the floor. Your shirt. When did you last change your shirt? He sits. Nothing moves him. Nothing worries him. He sits. A father. A husband. Leave me alone, please. Leave me alone, Sarah. You started the round, not me, you. Why must you always smoke? Oh. Talk with me. Talk. Talk, Harry. Sarah! Mama! Mama! Harry! Harry, what is it? She's Mama! Stop it, Harry! She's not a Mama! Ronnie! Uh Ronnie! Uh Dr. Wolfson, quick, quick, get him! What's happening? I don't know! Uh Harry! It was only a quarrel, you silly man! None of your tricks now, Harry! How do you hear me? Daddy! October 1947. Odds. Hello, Junior. I've come to see your father. Not back from work yet. Just in time for a proper. Oh, you still have that job, then. Can't hear you. Down. Auntie, please. Beethoven. Yeah, I know, I know. Some other time. I'm not feeling so good. Oof. What's price partition in Palestine, Aunt? Oh, Russia's back in the plan. <laughs> yes, and haven't the Arabs got upset over that? They're taking it to the high courts. They expected Russia to attack the United Nations plan, if only to upset the West. <laughs> Power politics. Has your father still got that job? <laughs> no. He's a storekeeper in a sweet factory now. Look. <laughs> Jelly babies. Can't help himself. Doesn't do it on a large scale, mind. Just a handful each night. Everyone does it. Yeah, how long has he been there? Mm, three weeks. You know he can't stay long at a job. And now he's got what he always wanted, a legitimate excuse. Oh, well, he can walk, can't he? Oh, he walks. Slowly and stooped, with his head sunk into his shoulders, hands in his pockets. His step isn't sure, frightened to exert himself in case he should suddenly drop dead. You ought to see him in a strong wind. He's like an autumn leaf. He seems to have given up the fight as though, thank God, he was no longer responsible for himself. You know, Aunt, I don't suppose there's anything more terrifying to a man than his own sense of failure. And your brother Harry is really a very sensitive man. No one knows more than he does how he's failed. Now that's... Tragedy for you. Having the ability to see what is happening to yourself and yet not being able to do anything about it, like a long nightmare. God, fancy being born just to live a long nightmare. <laughs> he gets around. But who knows how sick he is? Now we can't tell his lethargy from his illness. How's Ada and Dave? <laughs> Struggling in a tired cottage in the country. Ada suckles a beautiful baby. Dave lays concrete floors in the daytime and makes furniture by hand in the evening. Lunatics. <laughs> They're happy. Two Jews in the fens. <laughs> they had to get a rabbi from King's Lynn to circumcise the baby. A rabbi from King's Lynn. You'd never think there were rabbis in King's Lynn. <laughs> and you? A bookshop? Same one. Same one. Yeah, you're all so crazy and mixed up, I suppose. Don't call me that. God in heaven, don't call me that. I'm a poet. 
Another one. A socialist poet. Oh, a socialist poet. I have all the world at my fingertips. Nothing is mixed up. I have so much life that I don't know who to give it to first. I see beyond the coloured curtains of my eyes to a world. Say, how do you like that line? Beyond the coloured curtains of my eyes, past the pool of my smile. Yeah, what does that mean? What? The pool of my smile? Mm. It's a metaphor. The pool of my smile. A very lovely metaphor. Hmm. How's trade union activity? Oh, we've got a strike on. Dillinger's are probably going to lock out its workers. Ah, Dillinger's. Dillinger styles get all the men's smiles. This is the wear for everywhere. No wonder the workers don't like poetry. The old boy wants to reduce their wages because they're doing sale work. What's that? You know, sale work, specially made up clothes for the big West End sales. You mean the sale is not what is left over from the season before? <gasps> Grow up, Ronnie. You should know that by now. It's cheaper stuff, inferior quality. And the union doesn't protest. <gasps> Capitalist exploiters. The bastards, if you'll excuse the expression. Ooh. I'll write a book about them. I'll expose them in their true light. <laughs> what a novel, aunt, set in a clothing factory, the sweatshops. Look, you want to hear about this strike or you don't want to hear about this strike? So, because it's sale work, Dillinger wants to cut the women's wages by 10% and the men's by 12.5%. So what does he plan to do? I'll tell you what he plans to do. He plans to pay all 30 of them for one full week, sack them and then re-employ them, which would mean they were new employees and only entitled to board of trade rate, which is considerably less. But can he do that? Yeah, he did it. He did it. The girls told me. But this year, the shop stewards got together and asked me to go down and negotiate. Oh, they didn't all want it, mind you. One wagged his finger at me and cried, We're not taking your advice. We're not taking your advice. Oh, I gave them, you know me. First, I read the riot act to them and then I lashed out. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves, I told them. After the union struggled hard tooth and nail for every penny you get, and at the first sign of intimidation, you want to give in? For shame, I yelled at them, for shame. Oh, I tell you, Ronnie, a boss... You can always handle, because he always wants to bribe you, and that gives you the upper hand. But the worker... Oh. Hello, sissy. Mm. What are you doing here? I've come to see you. Well, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, sissy. I'm all right. <laughs> can you work all right? I can't move my hand very well. Lost its grip or something. Oh, strong as an oh, ox. Yeah. You're a sham, Harry boy. Want some tea? <laughs> yes, please, sir. So what do the doctors say is wrong with you? I've had a stroke. That's all they know. They don't tell you anything in hospitals these days. Mm. Sarah's gone to the doctor now to find out if I can go back again for observation. More observation? <clears throat> Don't talk to me about them. They make me sick. And all those blood tests they took and they still don't know after a year. I'm surprised you had that much blood. Well, <clears throat> I'm going. Here. Oh. Smoke yourself to death. Going? Yeah. I've got a strike meeting. In the evening? Oh, any time. So long, Junior. Hello, Sarah. I've just come to see Harry. Sorry, I must go. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Why don't you stay for supper? No, I've got a strike meeting. I'll be seeing you. Did you go to the doctor's? I've been, I've been. Oh, those stairs will kill me. What, what does he say? He gave me a letter. You should take it to the hospital. What, what does it say? Show me. Well, it's sealed. You mustn't open it. Show oh, it. What can you see? It's sealed. I want to see who it's addressed to. Did anybody make supper? We've not long come in. Uh-uh. Mustn't open. It's for the hospital. Hmm? I've got a branch meeting tonight. Ronnie, you can take your own supper. It's fried fish from yesterday. Mm. You want to come with me, Harry? I don't feel like going to any branch meeting. You want to get well, don't you? You don't want to become an invalid, do you? So come to a meeting tonight. Mix with people. They're your comrades, aren't they? Yes, my comrades. Nothing <laughs> is sacred for him. <sighs> Why should I worry whether you come or not? What are you doing, Ronnie? An evening in. I want to write a novel tonight. What, all in one night? Ronnie, do you think you'll ever publish anything? I mean, don't you have to be famous or be able to write or something? 
I mean, there must be such a lot of people writing novels. It's not socialist novels. Faith, Mother, faith. I am one of the sons of the working class, one of its own artists. You mean a political writer like Winston Churchill? Hmm. Well, does he write novels as well? Thought he was only a politician. Well, he's both. And he paints pictures. A painter? Paints pictures, landscapes and things. Of course, and in his spare time... Oh, he... he has spare time also. In his spare time, he builds walls at the bottom of his garden. A bricklayer. Oh. Ronnie, I told you, you should take up a trade. Why don't you go to evening classes? Why should you waste your time in a bookshop? If I were young, oh, what wouldn't I study? All the world I would study. How properly to talk and to write and make sentences. You'll be sorry. Don't be like your father. Don't be unsettled. Learn a good trade and then you have something to fall back on. You can always write. And when you work, then you have something to write about. Give me a chance, Ma. I only left school a year ago. That's what he kept saying, give me a chance. Everybody had to give him a chance. Now look at him. <sighs> Harry, you're not working in that sweet factory anymore, are you? Who said I'm not? Well, isn't he? Well, ask him. He knows. Of course I'm still working there. Harry, answer me. What do you gain by telling me this lie? Tell me. I want to know. All my life I've wanted to know what you've gained by a lie. I know you're not working there because I saw the foreman. You're not even a good liar. I've always known when you've lied. For 25 years it's been the same, and all the time I've not known what it's about. But you know. No one else knows, but you do. I'm asking you, Harry. Let me be your doctor. Let me try and help you. What is it that makes you what you are? Tell me. Only tell me. Don't sit there and say nothing. I'm entitled to know. After all this time, I'm entitled to know. Well, aren't I, Ronnie? So look at him. He sits and he sits and he sits and all his life goes away from him. You won't be like that, will you? I shall never take up a trade I hate as he did, if that's what you mean. And I shall never marry. At least not until I'm real and healthy. But what's there to grumble about, little Sarah? You have two splendid children, a fine son-in-law and a grandson. I haven't even seen my grandson yet. My daughter lives 200 miles away from me. My husband's a sick man. That's my family. Well, it's a family, I suppose. What about me? Young, good-looking, hopeful, talented. <laughs> well, hopeful anyway. <laughs> you? I'll wait and see what happens to you. Please, God, you don't make a mess of your life. Please, God. Did you ask for that rise? <laughs> I did ask for that rise. <laughs> Mr. Randolph, I said. He's the manager of that branch. Mr. Randolph, I know that the less wages you pay us bookshop assistants, the more you get in your salary. But don't you think I've sold enough books for long enough time to warrant you foregoing some of your commission? So what did he say, you liar? You're our best salesman, he said. But I've got to keep head office happy. So what did you say, you liar? So I said, it's not head office, it's your wife. <laughs> So what did he say, you liar? He said, Khan, he said, as you're so frank and you know too much, I'll give you a two-pound rise. Ronnie, did you get a rise, I asked you? <laughs> no, I did not get a rise. Mad boy, you. <laughs> I'm going to the meeting. That's it, Mother. You go to the meeting. At least if you keep on fighting them, there's hope for me. <laughs> you want supper, Dad? It's the old dead fish again. I'll lay it for you. Aren't you going to eat? I'm not hungry. I'll eat later. I must work now. Want me to read the first chapter to you, Dad? Oh, leave off, Ronnie. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> tired? You're not tired, Harry. You're just drowning with heritage, mate. <laughs> there. You can wash up after you. I'm going to my room now.
Don't be cold in that room. Now then, Harry, you know you must not read the letter. Remember what Mummy Kin said? Don't let me read the letter. I, I, I want to know what's in it. Use some willpower, Dad. You know the letter is not for you. Now, leave it be. There's a good boy. I, I, I want to see it. It's about me, isn't it? Don't leave off, Ronnie. No. Is it that letter? It is mine. It's mine. I want that envelope now. This instant, I want that envelope. <laughs> shouldn't do these things. I'm a sick man. If I want to open the envelope, you shouldn't stop me. You've got no right to stop me. Now you've upset me and yourself, you silly boy. Don't you see that I can't bear what you are? I don't want to hear your lies all my life. Your weakness frightens me, Harry. Did you ever think about that? I watch you, and I see myself, and I'm terrified. <laughs> what I am. I am. I will never alter. Neither you nor your mother will change me. It's too late now. I, I'm an old man, and if I've been the same all my life, so I will always be. You can't alter people, Ronnie. You can only give them some love and hope that they will take it. I'm sorry, it's, it's, it's too late now. I, I can't help you. Don't forget to have supper. Good night. November 1955. Have you an insurance policy for life or death? Name a company. Mm. Amount insured for. Annual payments. I don't know the annual payments. I pay one and a penny a week. 52 shillings and 52 pennies. Oh, shut that off. Classical music. All the suburbs start shouting at you. No, no, no. I was listening. You liked it? I liked it. It reminds me of Black Fire's Bridge in a fog. Black Fire's Bridge in a fog, it reminds you of. <laughs> Why a fog? Oh, I don't know. Why a fog? Fog, why fog? And why Blackfriars Bridge? Because I said so. You can be such a silly woman sometimes, Sarah. But if it's in a fog, so what difference whether it's Blackfriars Bridge or London Bridge? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I must get these forms done before Bessie and Monty arrive. You remember Bessie and Monty are coming tonight? <sighs> If Ronnie were here, I'd get him to fill it in for me. As if they don't know how many times I was at work this year. Forms. 
No, I haven't got any property. No, I haven't got any lodgers. I haven't got a housekeeper. The housekeeper. The housekeeper wouldn't do what I do for you, Harry, washing all those sheets. Oh, they're here. There. Harry, sit up. Do your fly buttons up. Wash that cigarette ash off you. Now, remember, don't let me down. Mm-hmm. You promised. Mm-hmm. You want to go now? Oh! oh. Sarah, little Sarah, how are you, sweetheart? You remember, Bessie? Hello. Harry, boy, how's Harry? You're looking well. You're feeling well? Ah, <laughs> they haven't changed a bit, now, Rob. Sit down, both of you. I'll get the kettle on. I always put the kettle on. That's the first thing Sarah always did. Am I right, Harry? <clears throat> I'm right, aren't I? Remember, Sarah, it was always a cup of tea first. Oh, I remember, I remember. Uh, we used to live in their old place in the East End. All the boys. Remember, Prince. <laughs> and your brother Jaime. How is Jaime? <laughs> Since we moved to Manchester, I've lost contact with everybody. Everybody. Oh, Jaime's all right. He's got a business. His children are married. and oh. He stays at home all the time. Prince works in a second-hand shop. A second-hand yeah. shop? But I thought... And Sissy... The union members retired her. Oh. She lives on a pension, visits the relatives, you know. Uh, it's all broken up, then. What's broken up about it? They couldn't keep up with the party, but the fight still goes on, huh? And Ida, <laughs> and Dave, and, and Ronnie, where are they? Tell me everything. Tell me all the news. I haven't seen you for so long, Sarah. It's so good to see you. Isn't it good to see you, Bessie? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Ada and Dave are still in the country. They've got two children. Dave is still making furniture by hand. He makes a living? They live. They're not prosperous, but they live. And Ronnie? Ronnie had such ambitions. What's he doing? My Ronnie. He's in Paris. There. I told you he'd go far. As a cook. A cook? Ronnie? A cook makes good money. (laughs) Sure. Cook makes good money. Ronnie, he's a very smart boy, isn't he, Sarah? Didn't always say, Ronnie, he's a very smart boy. Nobody could understand how an East End boy could have such a posh accent. (laughs) But cooking, he likes it. I mean, he's happy. I'll tell you something, Monty. People ask me, what is Ronnie doing? And believe me, I don't know what to answer. He used to throw his arms up in the air and say, I want to do something worthwhile. I want to create. Create. So, he's a cook in Paris. Please, God, he'll be a hotel manager one day. Mm. Please, God. And Harry? Poor Harry. Mm. He's had two strokes. He won't get any better. He's paralysed down one side. He can't control his bowels anymore, you know. Poor man. You think he likes it? It's like a nebbish Harry now. Mm. It's not easy for him, but he won't do anything to help himself. I don't know, other men, they get ill, but they fight. Harry's never fought. Funny thing. (laughs) There were three men like this in the flats. All had strokes, and all three of them seemed to look the same. They walked the same, stooped the same, all needing a shave. They used to sit outside together and talk for hours on end and smoke. Sit and talk and smoke. That was their life. Mm. Then one day, one of them decided he wanted to live. So he gets up and he finds himself a job, running a small shoe menders, and he's earning money now as a miracle, just like that. But the other one, he wanted to die. I used to see him standing outside in the rain, the pouring rain, getting all wet so that he could catch a cold and die. Well, it happened. Last week, he died. Mm. Influenza. Mm. Just didn't want to live. Mm. But Harry was not like either of them. He didn't want to die, but he doesn't seem to care about living. So, what can you do to help a man like that? Mm. I make his food, and I buy him cigarettes, and he's happy. My only dread is that he will mess himself. When that happens, I go mad. I I just don't know what I'm doing. Mm. It's like that, is it? It's like that. Mm. That's life. (laughs) Well, how about you, Monty? (laughs) You're still in the party? No, Sarah. I'm not still in the party. And I'll tell you why if you want to yeah, know. Now, Monty, don't get on to politics. Sarah, do me a favour, don't get him on to politics. Don't worry, I won't say much. Politics is living, Bessie. 
I mean, everything that happens in the world has got to do with politics. Listen, Sarah, Monty's got a nice little greengrocer's business in Manchester and no one knows he was ever a member of the party and we're all happy. It's better he forgets it. No, 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 I'll tell her. Let me tell her. I am her. warning you, Monty, if you get involved in a political argument, I shan't stay. No political argument, you hear me? Listen, Sarah. Remember Spain. Remember how we were proud of Dave and the other boys who answered the call? But did Dave ever tell you the way some of the party members refused to fight alongside the Trotskyists? And one or two of the Trotskyists didn't come back. And they weren't killed by the fascists either. And remember Itzhak Pfeffer? The Soviet Yiddish writer? We used to laugh, because Itzhak Pfeffer was a funny name. Ha ha. Where's Itzhak Pfeffer, everyone used to say? Well, we know now, don't we? Now that Stalin is dead, we know the whole committee of the Jewish Anti-Fascist League were shot. Shot, Sarah, in our land of socialism. That was our land. What a land that was for us. We didn't believe the stories then. It wasn't possible that it could happen in our one six of the world. And you believe the stories now, Monty? You don't. Now, Monty. You don't believe it, Sarah? You won't believe it. And supposing it's true, Monty. So... What should we do? Bring back the old days? Is that what you want? I don't know, sweetheart. I haven't got any solutions anymore. I've got a little shop up north. I'm not a capitalist, <laughs> by any means. I just make a comfortable living and I'm happy. Bessie Blesser is having a baby. And I am going to give him all that I can. Pay for his education, university if he likes, then I shall be satisfied. A man can't do any more, Sarah, believe me. There is nothing more to life than a house, some friends and a family. You take my word. And when someone drops an atom bomb on your family? So what can I do? Oh. Tell me! There's nothing I can do anymore, Sarah. I'm too small. Who can I trust? It's a big, lousy world of mad politicians, and I can't trust them, Sarah. The kettle's boiling. I'll make some tea. Enough now. Monty, enough. All right, all right. I didn't tell her anything she doesn't know. She's a fine woman, is Sarah. She's a fighter. All that worry and she's still going strong. But she has one fault. For her, the world is black and white. If you're not white, so you must be black. She can't see shades in character, you know what I mean? She can't see people in the round. They're all the same bunch. The authorities, the governments, the police, the post office, even the shopkeepers. She never trusted any of them. She was always fighting them. It was all so simple. The only thing that mattered was to be happy and eat. Anything that made you unhappy or stopped you from eating was the fault of capitalism. Do you think she ever read a book on political economy in her life? Bless her. Someone told her socialism was happiness, so she joined the party. You don't find many left like Sarah Carl. Oh, I wish you'd have known us in the old days. Harry there used to have a lovely tenor voice. All the songs we sang together and the strikes and the rallies. I used to carry their Ronnie, shoulder high, to the May Day demonstrations. Everyone in the East End was going somewhere. It was a slum, there was misery, but we were going somewhere. The East End was a big mother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, we'll talk about the good times now, shall we, Sarah? Blimey, sweetheart. It's not often that I come to London for the weekend. Here, remember that stall I used to have in Petticoat Lane? Eh, uh, I'll take you there tomorrow, Bessie. Yeah. Yeah. Manny the Corn King. Manny. <laughs> Him and his wife used to go to Norwich to sell phony corn cures. His wife used to dress up as a nurse... And they'd hang letters around the stall from people who were supposed to have been cured. <laughs> and what about Barney? Oh, Barney, that's it. He used to sell all the old farmers a lucky charm to bring them fortune. Sixpence each he'd sell them for, and you know what they were? Harry Coe beans. <laughs> yeah, Harry Coe beans dropped in diet of culling them. You could get them for frappin' to pan in a grocery shop, and Barney, he sold them for sixpence each. <laughs> sixpence each. Pound of beans used to last him for months. Uh, horrible times, horrible times. Dirty, unclean, cheating. But friendly. Friendly, you call it? I think it was friendly to swindle people. Sweetheart. 
You take life too seriously, believe me. Those farmers knew very well what they were buying. Nobody swindled anybody, cos everyone knew. You think so, Monty? Oh. Uh, quick, help me! What? It's happened? Uh, uh, what is it, Harry boy? Uh, it's happened, Harry? Uh, oh, quickly then, quickly. Uh, uh, oh, in front of Monty and Bessie, I'm so ashamed. Uh, I'll give you a hand. Uh, no, no, leave him, it's all right. Manage it, leave him, Monty. Oh, good God. Paul, Sarah and Harry. Jesus. It's all come to this. December 1956. Um. What time are you expect him, Ronnie, Sarah? He's supposed to arrive at 9.30 tonight. No. Call. Miss Air. How can you call him his hair when I want to call him his hair? Oh, please, Sarah, don't give the game away. Wait a minute, not everybody is passed. All right, then, cool. Pass. 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 Thank you. Can I start now? Is it your lead? I thought Prince dealt the cards. What's the matter with you, Sarah? Jaime dealt them. I could have sworn Sarah dealt well, them. Jaime, who dealt the cards? Well, it's been so long deciding what to call, I don't know anymore. Did I deal? I don't remember. Oh, this is no ridiculous. Prince dealt the cards. I remember it was with the poor adult. Okay, now quiet, everybody. Quiet! Every time I come to this house to play solo, it's the same confusion. Don't do Why don't you pay attention to the game? Now then, what was laid on the table for trumps? The two of spades. That was the last round. It was the six of but diamonds. I saw it with my own eyes. It was yeah, the two of... but you're not wearing your glasses, oh. Sarah. Yeah, it was the six of hearts, I remember now. Oh, thank God we've got two people to agree. I also saw the six of hearts on oh. the table. Hmm? Who's got the six of hearts? I have. Which means that you dealt. And if you dealt, that means that I lead. Everybody happy now? Uh -huh. There. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't mean to play that oh, card. Oh, too late. Oh, watch the game. Oh, fool that I am. Well, you can see I shouldn't have played that card. Well, of course I can see, but I'm glad that you now, did. Honey, would I normally have played that card? You aren't wearing your glasses, Sarah, oh. I told you. No, we can still catch in our play. Wait a second, a second. Let me get my glasses. I don't know what's happened to my eyes lately. I went to get my glasses changed the other day. The rims are too big for me. They kept slipping into my mouth, so I went to get them changed. And the man said he couldn't change them because they were national health glasses. So you know me. I tell him what for. And he says, Madam, he says, you want your money back? So I said, sure, I want my money back. And then I go up to the National Health Offices. Now, listen to this. I go up to the National Health Offices and I complain about the small allowance they made me for Harry. So the chap behind the desk, may he wake up dead, he says, what do you want, madam? Ten pounds a week? Did you ever? So I said, son, I said, when you were still peeing all over the floor, I was on strike for better conditions, and don't you be so cheeky. Oh, dear, you must talk to me like that. <laughs> Come on, Sarah, the game. <sighs> oh, what, what did you play hearts for? Couldn't you see what suits I was showing Please, you? let me play my own game. Don't I know what I'm doing? Well, it doesn't look like it, Sarah, so help me it doesn't. You can't be watching the game. Couldn't you guess she was going to throw off on heart? What is this? In the middle of the well, game. Of I could see, but how do you know that I can't play anything else? Are you going to play solo or aren't you going to play solo? Yeah, well, no inquests, please. Prince, play your game. Oh, it's always yeah. the same. You can't even get a good game of solo these days. Oh, look at him. Now he comes out of diamonds oh. and he wants to teach me how to play solo. There. Oh. Three havens from everybody, aye, please. Aye, aye. Yeah, well, yes, thank of course you. I couldn't catch her. Not with my hands. Yes. Why did you come out with hearts when you knew she might be throwing off because on them? Because I wanted to give the lead away. I couldn't do anything. Yeah, but why did you give the lead away with hearts when you knew she might not have any? But what was I supposed to know? It was my smallest card. Oh, you card. never could play your game of solo, Sarah. Oh, Spades! That was the spade. Spades! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diamonds, exactly. I could understand no, it. Oh, you They make you a film out there or something. Oh, 
can't see a thing. Oh, there's always something happening in these flats. Last week, a woman tried to gas herself. Now, oh, come on, let's go in. What happened? Your neighbours are having a party. Sarah's gone to see who's dead. What did the woman try to gas herself? Now, who knows why a woman of 32 wants to gas herself? Now, these flats are a world on their own. You'd have a whole lifetime here and not know your next-door neighbour. I don't... I don't... Don't... don't, don't. Do you want to write it down? I... I don't know the woman downstairs yet. Children, they don't know what to do with themselves. Seems she just spent the evening watching television with Philip. It was a horror film or something. And he kept frightening her. Frightening her. It's all they can do to each other. She got home late and her father started on her, so she ran back out and started screaming for Philip, the great lover. He came out in his pyjamas to soothe her. Well, Sarah, I've had a nice supper, a nice game of solo, and I'm going before the washing oh. up. Doesn't look as though Ronnie caught that train anyway. Oh, I can't understand it. He wrote to say he was leaving Paris at eight this morning. Uh, well, it's nearly 10.30. I must oh, be going oh. as well. Uh, me too, Sarah. Well, well, won't you stay for a cup of tea, at least? It's so long since we played a game of solo. And Harry and I, we oh, don't see many Harry. people these uh, days. It's been a nice evening, Sarah. The one you come and visit us sometimes. I'm always at home. What chance do I get to leave Harry now? Good night, Sarah. Oh. Good night. You want a cup of tea, Harry? I'm going to bed. Can I wake up for Ronnie? I... I... You're... You're what? I'll see him in the morning. That's it. Fell asleep. So I saw. I thought you were a dream. Perhaps I am. Oh, I hope not, Ronnie. Oh God, I hope not. Don't go away again. It's been so lonely without you and your friends. I don't mind not having any money. We can always eat, you know that. But I can't bear being on my own. I've only once <laughs> ever seen you cry. What's the good of crying, eh? I wish I could cry sometimes. Perhaps if you'd have cried more often, it would have been easier. It's just that I can't cope any longer, that's all. Three times a week, Daddy has that accident and it gets too much. I'm an old woman now. What makes you think I shall be able to cope? You? What are you talking about? Of course you'll be able to cope. You're young, aren't you? You're going to settle down. I'm... I'm sick, Sarah. Sick? Not physically. That's why I came home. Didn't you like the place where you worked? You always wrote how happy you were, what an experience it was. I hated the kitchen. <laughs> I hated the kitchen. People coming and going and not staying long enough to understand each other. Do you know what I've finally discovered? It's all my eye. This notion of earning an honest penny is all my eye. A man can work a whole lifetime and when he is 65 he considers himself rich if he has saved a thousand pounds. Rich! A whole lifetime of working in a good, steady, settled, enterprising, fascinating job. For every manager in a restaurant, there must be 20 chefs terrified of old age. That's all we are. People terrified of old age, hoping for the football pools to come home. It's all my eye, Sarah. Uh, I'll make you some tea. You hungry? 
No, I don't want anything to eat, thank you. I want to talk to you about something. But you must eat. You've been travelling all day. I do not want to eat. I want to talk. I'll just make you some tea, then. The water's boiled. You sit and relax, and then you'll go straight to sleep. You'll see. By the morning, you'll feel much better. Still optimistic, Mother. Food and sleep, and you can see no reason why a person should be unhappy. I'd have looked blue all these years if I hadn't have been optimistic. How is Harry? You'll see him tomorrow. He was too tired to wait up. Here, want some biscuits? Huh? No, have a piece of cake. Look, cake I made specially for you. Your favourite. Mother, don't fuss! So, so, I'm sorry. Is this how you come home? Start by shouting? Is this a nice homecoming? Are you still in the party? Yes. Active. So? I don't suppose you bother to read what happened in Hungary. Hungary? Look at me, Mother. Talk to me. Take me by the hand and show me who was right and who was wrong. Point them out. Do it for me. I stand here and a thousand different voices are murdering my mind. Do you know I could not wait to come home and accuse you? Accuse me? You didn't tell me there were any doubts. What doubts? What are you talking about? Everything has broken up around you and you can't see it. What? What, what, what you mad boy? Explain what you mean. What has happened to all the comrades, Sarah? I even blush when I use that word, comrade. Why do I blush? Why do I feel ashamed to use words like freedom and democracy and brotherhood? They don't have meaning anymore. Remember all that writing I did? I was going to be a great socialist writer. I can't make sense of a word, a simple word. You look at me as if I'm talking in a foreign language. Didn't it hurt you to read of the murder of the Jewish anti-fascist committee in the Soviet Union? You as well. <laughs> Monty Blatt came up here some months ago and said the same thing. He's also left the party. He runs a greengrocer shop now in Manchester. And Dave and Ada in the fence. And Prince working in a second-hand shop. And Uncle Jaime stuck smugly at home. And Auntie Sister, <laughs> once devoted, once involved, wandering from relative to relative. What's happened to us? Were we cheated or did we cheat ourselves? I just don't know. God in heaven, I just do not know. Can you understand what it is suddenly not to know? And the terrifying thing is... I don't care either. Drink your tea, darling. Do you know what the trouble is, Mother? Can't you guess? You're it? tired, Ronnie. You do know what the trouble is, you just won't admit it. In the morning, you'll feel much better. Think hard. Look at my face, look at my nose and my deep-set eyes. Even my forehead is... <laughs> Why don't you listen to me? Go to bed, and in the morning... You... Political institutions, society, they don't really affect people that much. Ronnie! Who else was it who hated the jobs he had? Who couldn't bear the discipline imposed by a daily routine. Couldn't make sense of himself and gave up. Are you mad? I've lost my faith and I've lost my ambition. Now I understand him perfectly. I wish I hadn't shouted as I used to. Mad boy! You know that I'm right! You've never been right about anything. You wanted everybody to be happy, but you wanted them to be happy your way. It was strawberries and cream for everyone, whether they liked it or not. And now look what's happened. The family you always wanted has disintegrated. And the great ideal you always cherished has exploded in front of your eyes, but you won't face it. You just refuse to face it. I don't know how you do it, but you do. You just do. You're a pathological case, Mother. Do you know that? You're still a communist. All right, then. I'm still a communist. Shoot me, then. I'm a communist. I've always been one. Since the time when all the world was a communist. You know that? When you were a baby and there was unemployment and everybody was thinking, so all the world was a communist. But it's different now. Now the people have forgotten. I sometimes think they're not worth fighting for because they forget so easily. You give them a few shillings in the bank and they can buy a television so they think it's all over. There's nothing more to be got. They don't have to think anymore. Is that what you want? A world where people don't think anymore? Is that what you want me to be satisfied with? A television set? Look at him. My son. He wants to die. Don't laugh at me, Sarah. Well, well you want me to cry again? We should all just sit down and cry. I don't see things in black and white anymore. My thoughts keep going pop, like bubbles. That's my life now, you know, just a lot of little bubbles going pop, 
And he calls me a pathological case. Pop, 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 pop. Schmop. <sighs> you think it doesn't hurt me? The news about Hungary. You think I know what happened and what didn't happen? Do any of us know? Who do I know who to trust now? God, who are our friends now? But all my life, I fought. With your father and the rotten system that couldn't help him. All my life, I worked with a party that meant glory and freedom and brotherhood. You want me to give it up now? You want me to move to Hendon and forget who I am? If the electrician who comes to mend my fuse blows it instead, so I, I should stop having electricity, I should cut off my light. Socialism is my light. Can you understand that? A way of life. A man can be beautiful. I hate ugly people. I can't bear meanness and fighting and jealousy. I've got to have light. I'm a simple person, Ronnie. And I've got to have light and love. You think I didn't love your father enough, don't you? I'll tell you something. When Ada had diphtheria, I was pregnant. I asked Daddy to carry her to the hospital. He wouldn't. We didn't have any money because he didn't care to work and I didn't know what to do. He disappeared. It was Mrs. Bernstein who saved her. You remember Mrs. Bernstein? No, of course not. She died before you were born. It was Mrs. Bernstein's soup. Ada still has that taste in her mouth. Chicken soup with barley. She says it has a friendly taste. You ask her. That's what saved her. Not even my brothers had money in those days and a bit of dried crust with a cup of tea. Oh, it was wonderful. But Daddy had the relief money. And someone told me they saw him eating salt beef sandwiches in blooms. He didn't care. Maybe it was his illness then. Who knows? He, he was never really a bad man. He never beat us or got drunk or gambled. He wasn't vulgar or coarse and he always had friends. So what was wrong? I could never understand him. All I did was fight him because he didn't care. Look at him now. He doesn't care to live. He's never cared to fully undress himself and put on pyjamas. Never cared to keep shaved or washed or be on time or even turn up. And now he walks around with his fly buttons and his shoelaces undone because he still doesn't care to fight his illness. And the dirt gathers around him. He doesn't care. And so I fought him because he didn't care. I fought everybody who didn't care. All the authorities and the shopkeepers, even today, those stinking assistance officers, I could buy them with my little finger. Even now, I'm still fighting them. And you want to be like them, like your father? I'll fight you then. And lose again. But your father was a weak man. Could you do any of the things he did? I would not be surprised. Oh, no, Ronnie, your father would never have left his mother to go abroad as you did. Oh, I don't tell you all this now to pull you down. But on the contrary, so you should know... So you should care. Learn from us. For God's sake, learn from us. What does it matter if your father was a weakling or the man you worked with was an imbecile? They're human beings. That doesn't mean a thing. There will always be human beings. And as long as there are, there will always be the idea of brotherhood. Doesn't mean a thing. Despite the human beings. Not a thing. Despite them. It doesn't mean a thing. All right, then, nothing, then. It all comes down to nothing. People come and people go. Wars destroy, accidents kill and plague starve. It's all nothing. Philosophy. You want philosophy? Nothing means anything. There, philosophy. I know. So nothing. Despair. Die, then. Would that be achievement? To die? You don't want to do that, Ronnie. So, what if it all means nothing? When you know that... You can start again. Please, Ronnie. 
Don't let me finish this life thinking I lived for nothing. We got through, didn't we? We got scars, but we got through. You hear me, Ronnie? You've got to care. You've got to care or you'll die. I... I can't. Not now. It's too big. Not yet. It's too big to care for it. It's too big. It's too big. You'll die. You'll die if you don't care. You'll die. Ronnie! If you don't care, you'll die! In Chicken Soup with Barley by Arnold Wesker. Sarah Khan was played by Samantha Spiro. Harry Khan, Danny Webb. Monty Blatt, Harry Peacock. Dave Simmons, Nitsan Sharon. And Prince Silva was Rene Zaga. Jaime Kossoff was Steve First. Sissy Khan, Alexis Segerman. Ada Khan, Jenna Augen. Ronnie Khan, Tom Rosenthal, and Bessie Blatt was Rebecca Gethings. Chicken Soup with Barley is a Royal Court Theatre production and was directed for the stage in 2011 by Dominic Cook, with original sound by Gareth Fry and music arranged by Gary Yershon. It was directed for the radio by Simon Godwin and produced for BBC Radio 3 by Catherine Bailey. <laughs>